What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. You might be killing your cucumber plants today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you five mistakes you cannot afford to make when growing cucumbers. Let's go! The first mistake you cannot afford to make when growing cucumbers is allowing the dreaded cucumber beetle to decimate your plants when they are young. Not only will the cucumber beetles feed on your young plants, they will also spread diseases like bacterial wilt. There are a few ways to combat the attack of the dreaded cucumber beetle. The first, simplest, best, and easiest way to do so is to plant burpless, non-bitter varieties of cucumber. Because cucurbitacin is the chemical compound found in cucumbers that causes them to be bitter, this is also what attracts the cucumber beetles. So if we plant varieties that are non-bitter, then the cucumber beetles will be less likely to actually attack our plants. Oftentimes in the catalogs, you'll see them labeled as burpless because this cucurbitacin is, is also what uh, causes people to burp, some people to burp when they eat the cucumbers. Some great varieties, that are non-bitter are the Bait Alpha, the China Jade, great one, and one of my all-time favorites, the Suyo Long Cucumber. Such a great one. Another way to protect your plants from the cucumber beetles is to use an insect netting when the plants are young. This way the cucumber beetles can't even get to your plants and can't cause any damage. Just make sure if you're using insect netting that you remove the netting when the plants start to flower. This way bees can get in and pollinate. Unless you want to pollinate the plants yourself by hand, or you can plant varieties that don't even need bees to pollinate, they'll develop without pollination. Varieties, again, like the Bait Alpha and even the China Jade. Another thing you can do is you can plant a trap crop next to your cucumbers, something like radishes. The radishes will draw in the cucumber beetles and they'll go after the radishes instead of going after your cucumbers. So it's a nice little trap crop. The last thing you can do is you could plant your cucumbers later in the season when the cucumber beetles are less prevalent. Using any or all of these uh, tips to avoid dealing with cucumber beetles will make a considerable difference, not only allowing your plants to grow healthier, but also to produce more. It looks like this guy wants a radish. Let me just give him one real quick. He's been sitting patiently. White icicles. This is a good one. He didn't jump up, so we'll snap off. A little piece for them, get some of the dirt off, let them snack on this. Then we'll get back to dealing with some cucumbers because this guy loves his cucumbers too. So he wants us to give him, give him a snack, but he also wants us to focus on making sure we get some good cucumber harvest this year. While we have you here, me and Tuck want to mention to hit the share button if this video is providing you some value. Hit the subscribe button also, but when you share the videos, that helps the channel considerably, and that also helps a lot of people get some of the information that can allow them to grow more food. In this case, get more cucumbers. Another thing, we want to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a shirt with the flower of life on it. Right now it's a bit windy, so we got the long sleeve on. We've got short sleeve and all different kinds of shirts and stuff too. So grab one while they're still around. Me and Tuck want to mention there's another way to protect your cucumbers from the cucumber beetle, and it has to do with a clay spray. The same clay spray that I use on these apples right here, you can see it on here. This is surround kaolin clay. It's just clay, it's a protectant. You can use this to spray on your young cucumber plants and that will really just make the cucumber beetles not want to attack your plants. This works especially well if it's a section that you can't cover with an insect netting. I've used it in the past and it works really well. So what it does is the cucumber beetles, even if they try to go after your plants, then the, the clay on the plants gums up the antennas and the cucumber beetles and they can't really navigate and fly. So it just makes it way less attractive for the cucumber beetles to go after those plants. It works really nice, especially on a section, again, that you can't use an insect netting. But the second mistake you cannot afford to make when growing cucumbers is allowing them to ripen on the vine. This is a big no-no when it comes to cucumbers because if you allow even one cucumber to start to ripen and start to finish the seed, then the whole vine will quit producing. So you could essentially be killing off your own cucumber plants by not staying on top of picking. Because when it comes to cucumbers and a lot of other plants, the cucumber, the plant, its whole desire is not to 
produce a, a lot of cucumbers in a big crop. Its desire is to produce viable seed for offspring for the next year. So if we trick the plant by continually going out there and picking the cucumbers when they're young, then the plant will continue to produce. But if we allow one cucumber to start to ripen the seed on the vine, then the plant will transition from the production of flowers and fruit over to the ripening of seed. We don't want that to happen. So when it comes to your cucumbers, you wanna pick early and often. The more you pick, the more you will get. If your cucumbers are turning yellow on the vine and they're not a yellow variety, like the lemon cucumber, then those are overripe and you've essentially shut off the production on your cucumber plant. So it's always better to pick them early when in doubt. The third mistake you cannot afford to make when growing cucumbers is improper watering practices. Cucumbers are 95% water, so they need a lot of water in order to do well. They need an adequate level of moisture. So when the summer heat comes, you need to make sure you're giving your cucumber plants a nice deep soaking. It's also important to have a thick organic mulch down because this will help retain the moisture in the soil because if you allow the cucumbers to dry out, then they're gonna have misshapen, tasteless cucumbers and the plants will stop producing and they might even stop growing. But if you keep a nice thick organic mulch down, that will allow for even watering. Uneven watering, basically allowing the cucumber plants to completely dry out and then soaking them with water will also form uh, cucumbers that are deformed and misshapen. So they need a good consistent level of moisture and organic mulch will help greatly with that. Another thing you never want to do, if possible, when, when watering your cucumbers is you do not want to get the leaves wet. Leaves that are wet are more prone to disease issues. So if you have to wet the leaves when watering, just make sure that's only in the morning. This way the leaves have all day to dry out. The fourth mistake you can't afford to make when growing cucumbers is allowing them to sprawl on the ground instead of growing them up a trellis. When you grow cucumbers up a trellis, they'll have way more airflow and way more light. And we know that light and air are the enemies of disease. Also, when you grow up a trellis, it will be much easier to water the cucumbers at the base and not get the leaves wet when watering. Another thing is, when you grow up a trellis, it will be much easier to see the cucumbers as they start to ripen. This way, one of them won't over ripen on you and it won't make the whole plant quit producing. If you allow the cucumbers to sprawl on the ground, they have a way higher likelihood of getting infected from soil-borne organisms when the leaves are in contact with the ground. Also, the leaves will remain wet longer because the plants won't have as good airflow and they won't have as many windows of light getting to the plant. So that's not what we want at all. When you grow up a trellis, another thing is you can plant the cucumbers way closer together and way denser because you're going to be using the vertical space instead of just allowing them to sprawl. When you use that vertical space, you could even plant like high intensity really close together and prune the cucumbers, which I've done a video of on the past. If you wanna grow in a super high intense, uh, awesome growing style, it's a lot of fun to grow cucumbers like that, but there are just so many advantages to growing up a trellis as opposed to letting them sprawl on the ground. And some of the main problems are disease issues. And again, when it comes to growing cucumbers, tomatoes, whatever it is, it's always better to avoid an issue instead of trying to manage it. The fifth mistake you can't afford to make when growing cucumbers, it's probably the most common mistake made especially by new gardeners, is you can't afford to plant your cucumbers out too early. Cucumbers are heat loving plants. So when you plant them out early, it causes way more issues than good. When it comes to your cucumbers, you don't want to plant out any earlier than three to four weeks after your last expected frost date. Even if the air temperature seems to be warming up uh, you know, regularly, the ground temperature is super important too because even if there's heat in the air, the soil might not be heated up and cucumbers hate having cold feet. They don't like sitting in cold ground. So if you plant your cucumbers out too early and the ground's still cold, they're just gonna sit and wait. That isn't what we want. We want to put our cucumbers in the ground and we want them to hit the ground growing and explode into growth. So it's always better in my opinion to plant your cucumbers just a little, little later than too early because they always just grow better when the ground's warm and the air temperature's warm and you can have that consistent growth. You don't want cucumbers growing really well and then sitting in the ground and then trying to get back into the, the, like the growth stage. You want to keep that consistent exploding growth going all the way up into production, that's when you'll get the healthiest cucumbers. So when it comes down to it, it's not always good to plant early. In fact, sometimes planting early 
causes more harm than good. Me and Tuck laid out for you the five mistakes you cannot afford to make when growing cucumbers, but we feel like we need to leave you with a few bonus tips. That's what the little boss told me, right boyo? So a few more things we think that will help you when growing cucumbers. One of them is in the season, when your cucumbers start producing, you always wanna make sure you start another round of cucumbers. This way you could replace the cucumbers that you have in the ground if something happens. Let's just say you let one of the vines, uh, the cucumbers ripen on the vine and then the vine quits producing, you can replace it. Or if the cucumber beetles are super heavy on one variety, you can replace it with a different one. So it's go always good to have other plants on deck. Another thing you want to do is you want to write in your garden journal any issues that you had this year, this way next year you could plant varieties that are resistant to that issue. For instance, if powdery mildew was a problem that you had this year, then next year you can plant a variety that's resistant to the powdery mildew, something like the Socrates. This is an awesome variety, and it's another one of those varieties that doesn't even need bees to pollinate it. The thing about this is, this has gotta be like one of the most expensive cucumbers that I've ever planted. This thing right now online is $10 for 10 seeds. It's a fantastic variety, has an incredible sweet flavor, and it grows really well, so I had to pick some of them up. If something like uh, bacterial wilt is a problem you have, you can go with the Shintokiwa cucumber. That's a great one too. Or if anthracnose is an issue that you have, then you could try the Market More 76. So whatever problems you have, there's always varieties that are like resistant to those issues. Again, going back to what I said previously, this way you don't have to manage the issue, you can try to avoid it. That's why a garden journal is super, super important. You'll notice down here, a lot of times I'll plant my cucumbers in cells like this instead of direct seeding. I do direct seed some cucumbers, but when it comes to something like the Socrates, which they're so expensive for one seed, I don't wanna plant the seeds out and have something happen to them. I'd rather start them safely in cells like this and then transplant them out. Especially because uh, the neighborhood bird, it's uh, caused some problems for me this year. I planted out a, I mean, I planted some in the ground and some cucumbers in the ground and it ripped them up. I planted out a whole cell of cucumbers and it went and it ripped up all my cucumbers. Now I'm using my protective uh, seed box, which I put the cucumbers like underneath that. This way the birds can't get to them. So it seems like when you're growing delicious food like this, there's always something that wants to come after it. So not only do you have to do a good job of timing your cucumbers right, of, you know, of transplanting them out before they get root bound, which is important, of hardening them off, before you transplant them out. If you're growing cucumbers inside, you can't just stick them right into the ground. You've gotta give them some time to harden off to get used to the temperatures. You have to guide them as you grow, protect them from the cucumber beetles, but then you also have to protect them from all the other kinds of pests. Uh, you know, Everything wants the delicious fruit. So it's not just about planting seed and letting it grow. Protecting is vitally important when it comes to your harvest. And then even when you are harvesting, you still gotta make sure that you're not making the mistake of letting them ripen. You need to stay on top of picking them so that the uh, v vines continue to produce. If you avoid these mistakes, if you take in some of these bonus tips, me and Tuck are super, super confident that you will have your biggest, most successful cucumber harvest ever this year. And even if you run into some issues, you can always go to that garden journal, reference it in the future, and then you know, you'll know you get to the point where we were. I mean, the amount of cucumbers that I harvested last year was insane. I had more cu cucumbers than I even know what to do with, and there's nothing more joyful, nothing funner, nothing better than going out to a vine, grabbing a cucumber right off the plant, and just snacking right into it. It's, it's what it's all about. One thing that I love to do when it comes to my cucumbers is I like to replace my peas with cucumbers. So it's starting to get warmer out here. The peas have produced a lot and they're still flowering, which is really nice. But once they stop flowering and I get my last harvest, what I like to do is I'll take the peas out and I'll put the cucumbers in this location. That's one reason it's always good to have more cucumbers on deck waiting because I don't want any open spots in the garden. These peas have produced really nicely this year and I'm super happy about that. But as they start to go out, I'll plant cucumbers. A lot of times what I'll do is, come over here, is we'll just cut the, you'll notice how I planted the peas in the back here. We'll just cut the peas down. We won't rip the roots out because the peas are legumes and they're nitrogen fixing plants. So we can just cut those back and then the nitrogen in the soil will be 
like more bioavailable for the cucumbers, even if not immediately in the future, for the cucumbers to get some added level of nitrogen. It's like using cucumbers to help feed the next round of cucumbers. I mean, using peas to help feed the next round of cucumbers. You'll notice one thing also, look at the top here. Look how all the bites and everything on these. The birds just love attacking my peas. That's one reason that I have them in the boxes like this. And then as the peas start to get tall, I'll remove the netting. The mistake I did this year was that I didn't pull the netting down in the front. I just took the netting off the top and then the birds were eating all the new growth. Now I took the netting off the bottom. This way the birds eat some of the older growth here, which I'm not worried about. And I just want that new growth because that's where all the peas are going to be. Still producing really nicely though. I wanna bring you over to a tree real quick. I gotta show you something. This Rainier cherry, absolutely packed with cherries. An unbelievable amount of fruit. Look at the size of it. Some are so high I won't be able to reach them, but regardless, they look beautiful. I gotta taste one. Tuck's just chilling somewhere. I gotta get a good one for you. There's so many. Some, some are super ripe, some are just on the cusp of being ripe. Let me find a nice one. Here's a nice one right here. Not a red cherry. It's got like a little red blush in it. So the birds don't attack this one as heavily as they would like a bright red one. But let's actually get a little taste of it. Mm. So sweet, so good. Nothing better than a fresh garden treat. I want to show you this pallet raised bed right here where I'm growing a lot of my tomatoes. Last year, I grew cucumbers right in this spot here. I'm going to do it again because cucumbers and tomatoes have a lot of the same companion plants. Like cucumbers like growing with carrots. That's a good companion. They also love growing with borage right here. Another good companion and marigolds and garlic. So I'm gonna be planting my cucumbers, one at this end here and one at the other end. I mean, they just produce massive harvest. I think it was the suyo long I had over here last year. And what happens is I let the cucumbers grow real tall and then I'll let some of the extra suckers at the top. So you almost get like this like um, umbrella kind of shape and it's just so many, so many cucumbers at the top there. This is a good spot I grow my cucumbers. And I also grow them up the fence line behind me. I got some massive harvest from the fence line over there. That's today's video though. Thanks for watching. Me and Tuck, hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. We hope you truly got value out of this video and that this video equips you with the necessary tools to get massive, consistent harvest of cucumbers all season long. That's the goal. If you did find value in this video, we ask that you share this video with your friends. That really helps uh, the channel a lot and me and Tuck would appreciate your support in that way. We also want to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprisioni.com. Grab one of the Gardening is Life shirts with the Flower of Life right on it and be part of the team. Another, another thing we want to mention is to hit the join now button if you want to be an actual part of Team Grow, if you want to have your hand in everything we're doing out here. And that leads us to the next thing. We want to thank Julie Panero. Thank you for being part of Team Grow. Thank you for directly having your hand in everything we're doing out here in all the production of the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the fresh cherries, the strawberries, because of your guys' support, that makes it so me and Tuck can, you know, live out the dream of eating fresh organic fruit in the backyard and share this message with as many people as possible so they could have the same opportunities to grow some of their own food, to get connected with nature, and to just feel the incredible joy of being part of the whole entire system of planting the seed, watching it grow, getting the harvest, sharing with others. The whole thing together, it's just, uh, it's just magical, so we want to thank you for that. I don't know where Tuck is. He must be wandering around somewhere. Let's be honest, he's probably like uh, getting to the radishes, eating the radishes somewhere, or even snacking maybe on the pea somewhere. The garden's looking glorious. In a very short time, we're going to be doing a harvest video, so we hope you come along for that because it's going to be epic between all the different berries that are coming in, the cherries, I mean, some of the, even some of the cabbages are starting to ripen this, or starting to be ready this early in the season. That's all we have for today though. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.